Hey guys, welcome to this course on Node.js tutorial for beginners. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about Node.js. So why we use Node.js, what is Node.js, what are its advantages and why Node.js is so popular these days for building backend server side applications. So let's start with an introduction about Node.js. So Node.js is an open source cross-platform server-side JavaScript framework which you can use to develop backend applications or command line applications and there are many other uh, uses of Node.js. So Node.js was created by a developer called Rian Dell in 2009 and the development and maintenance of Node.js was sponsored by a company called Joint, who was an employer of Rian Dell. Now Node.js is MIT licensed. So as I said, it's a cross-platform open source application which you can use. And Node.js is based on Google V8 engine. This we will see in detail what is V8 engine and why V8 engine was used for the Node.js uh, development. Now Node.js is available on variety of platforms like Windows, Linux and Mac OS and other type of operating systems. So you can develop Node.js application on any kind of operating system. But if I talk about my experience, 95 to 98% of Node.js applications run on Linux or Linux based operating systems. So this is the real world scenario, but for learning, you can use any operating system of your choice. So the goal of Node.js is to provide an easy way to build scalable network programs on server side. Now in its initial days, Node.js was adopted by some big companies like PayPal, LinkedIn, Yahoo, uh, Walmart and Uber and these companies found out that if they compare uh, Node.js with Ruby on Rails which was very popular at that time they were able to cut their servers from 30 to 3 and they were able to run their Node.js applications 20x faster in some scenarios when we compare it to Ruby on Rails applications and also most of the front-end development was already done in JavaScript. So these companies were able to combine their front-end and back-end team because they were able to create front-end and back-end uh, applications using the same programming language. And because of that, full-stack development was possible using the same language for the front-end applications and the back-end applications. Similar advantages were found out when we compare Node.js with the Java applications, which were also very popular at that time and still are popular. So now we have some basic understanding of Node.js. And now let's talk a little bit more about Node.js as a framework. So Node.js is an asynchronous IO framework. This also we will see in the latest slides what is synchronous versus asynchronous application. Now the core of Node.js is written in C++ on top of the V8 engine. So Node.js is written in C, C++ and JavaScript and basically it lets you to run JavaScript code without a browser. Before Node.js, it was only possible to run JavaScript on the browser. Now you might ask a question, why Riandel chose JavaScript over any other language, right? There were so many languages, but why JavaScript was chosen? And also you might say that JavaScript uh, is very well integrated with browsers. So browser features like Dome Tree is a part of JavaScript language, but it's not. So these kind of browser features are provided by the environment they run on, that is browser. And 
these features are not the part of JavaScript. So if we remove all the browser features from JavaScript, we still have a JavaScript language in which functions are the first class citizens, which means that you can pass function around like other variables, right? Also JavaScript have event model, which you might have seen on the front end. So this event model is used for the things like on click in the browser. So what we need is a tool on which JavaScript can run on except for, for the browser on your native computer. And that's where Google's V8 engine comes into picture, right? So Node.js uses Google's V8 JavaScript engine which is also used by Google Chrome. So V8 basically transforms your JavaScript code into efficient machine code for your platform. And this V8 engine on which your Node.js program is going to run, it's going to take care of all the memory management and garbage collection for your Node.js application. So in simple words, if you take Google's V8 JavaScript engine and some JavaScript code, you will be able to run your JavaScript code without the browser. So it's very important to note here is Node.js is not a web only framework and also Node.js is not a programming language. Node.js is just a JavaScript framework which runs on your V8. Now, if you don't know, you can Google about this. Uh, what are the JavaScript engines used by famous browsers? So for example, Firefox uses SpiderMonkey, Safari uses JavaScript Core, which is also called as Nitro. Microsoft Edge uses Chakra, JavaScript engine. Similarly, Chrome uses V8 engine. So every major browser has its own JavaScript engine, right? So Node.js uses V8 JavaScript engine. Now there is a very interesting question which might arise here, which is unfortunately we won't be able to read files from the system or open network connection using JavaScript only uh, code, right? So basically you will have no IO or system calls at all when you just use JavaScript. So this is where Node.js comes into picture. So Node.js basically provides three things. Node.js provides the binding to the native system it runs on. It provides the event loop and it provides the thread pool. With all these three components, we get a platform that supports non-blocking IO through asynchronous programming, which gives us significantly good performance over a traditional architecture. So in this picture, you can see the level of abstraction of Node.js. So on top comes the Node.js standard library, which is written in JavaScript. And this Node.js standard library uses Node bindings, which are written in C or C++, which runs on top of your V8 engine, which uses thread pool and event loop. So in case if you want to write your own binding for your Node.js application, Node.js provides you this capability. So you can directly use C++ to bind your JavaScript code. So you can write your node bindings in C or C++ and use it with the node standard library. So let's talk about why we use Node.js. So as I said, Node.js is non-blocking IO. So in most of the software systems, when you make a system call, for example, you want to access a file on a disk, or for example, you want to query a database, these calls are blocking. This means that program execution will stop and wait for a call to finish and return the result. Now in case of Node, Node takes a very different approach by serving all requests from one single thread. So the program code running on this thread is still executed synchronously, but every time a system call takes place, it will be delegated to the event loop, which we talked about, right? So 
Node.js is single threaded, but it has a very powerful concept of event loop. That means our main process will not be put to sleep and will continue serving other requests. And as soon as the previous system call is complete, the event loop will execute a callback function which was passed at the time of this system call. So this callback is going to deal with the result returned. Now don't be intimidated about all these terminology. I'm just talking about the architecture of Node.js and if you don't even care about this architecture, don't worry. Learning Node.js is not very complicated if you do it properly. Now Node.js supports thousands of modules. So we talked about the Node.js bindings. So the community of Node.js is very strong. So the community member regularly uh, writes these Node.js bindings for your Node.js standard library. So whatever your use case is, the possibility is there is a module which is already available for you to use directly and you don't need to write any binding for your standard node library. The other advantage is you can use Node.js on your Windows, Linux or Mac operating system. So development becomes very easy and there is one language for your front end and the back end, right? So you don't have to learn any other language. If you just want to stick with JavaScript for your front end and the back end, you can just use Node.js in the back end and in the front end, you can use any other JavaScript framework. And last but not the least, Node.js has a very active community. So for example, whatever use case you are thinking about, the chances are there is a module already existing for that use case, which is developed by the community. Now let's talk a little bit about non-blocking versus uh, blocking code. So as I said, whenever you make a system call, if you use any other language, what it's going to do. So here you can see uh, the blocking code example. So for example, for a uh, blocking IO and for your synchronous uh, programming code, your thread is going to wait for the result to come, right? So if you are reading the file, it's going to read the file and then it's going to give the result and then it's going to continue uh, inside the thread, right? But when you use a framework like Node.js, which is asynchronous and non-blocking IO, the main thread don't wait during the IO operation. IO means input output operations like uh, reading a file or doing a query inside a database, right? It goes through with the execution of the code and once the file is read or the IO operation is finished, there is something called callback function, which is called, which is passed at the time of making this IO call. And it becomes possible due to event loop, which runs inside your V8 engine. So this was an introduction about Node.js. Now, if you are a little bit intimidated with the explanation, which I gave you, don't worry, just wait for the next coming videos in which I'm going to sequentially guide you step by step right from the starting in which we are going to see how you can install Node.js and how you can write your first program in Node.js and then how we can move forward from there. So I hope you have liked this video and enjoyed the explanation. I will see you in the next video.